I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Acts, chapter 6, so let's focus on verses 1 and 2. In those days, as the number of disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint by the Hellenistic, or the Greek Jews, against the Hebraic Jews, that their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution. And then the twelve summoned the whole company of the disciples and said, It would not be right for us to give up preaching about God to wait on tables. Acts chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. You know, hidden in today's passage is a controversial little statement. And most people would just skip past it. And the statement is at the beginning of verse 2. Then the twelve summoned the whole company. You see, the controversy in the statement concerns who is missing. And who's missing is the Apostle Paul. You see, today's passage points to decisions that were made during the time after Judas hung himself and yet before Paul's Damascus Road faith-changing experience. And most believers consider Paul to be the 12th apostle who replaced Judas. But I don't believe that Scripture strongly supports that idea. And today's verse is uh, one of those places where I would point. It definitely never states it plainly. Matthias was the twelfth apostle, as we learned in Acts chapter 1, verse 26. And then they cast lots for them, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Acts chapter 1, verse 26. It's commonly held by theologians that Matthias was chosen because of Peter's lack of patience, and yet God makes no negative comment about Matthias's selection. God chose to make no comment, because he definitely could have. So, was Paul an apostle? Well, of course he was. Paul describes himself as such in Romans chapter 11, verse 13. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles in view of the fact that I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I magnify my ministry if I can somehow make my own people jealous and save some of them. You know, the issue that theologians have with uh, there being 13 apostles lies partly in an ignorance of Jewish culture and symbols. People assume that because there were 12 disciples within the same number as the 12 tribes of Israel, then there could only be 12 apostles. But 12 apostles works if Jesus only came to redeem Israel. Indeed, Jesus came initially to the Jewish people, but with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the Gentiles were given easier access to salvation in the Holy Spirit. Again, in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, listen to the Apostle Paul. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and now also to the Gentiles. For in it, God's righteousness is revealed from faith to faith. Just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Now, in Jewish understanding, the number 13 is the number of completion, or it's one of them. 13 is not unlucky, like we think of unlucky 13. In the Jewish culture, it is a blessed number. Uh, consider the Shema in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Well, the Hebrew word for one is echad. And you know, in the Hebrew language, there are no separate number system. Each letter has a numerical value. And so in Hebrew, every letter is also a number. Hence, every word has a numeric value. Now, added together, the numeric value of the word echad is 13. And the idea of the 12 apostles leading Israel and the 13th bringing the gospel to the Gentiles, while not directly stated in Scripture, it could be considered completely biblical, for it brings echad, or oneness, to the world. And it completes the body of Messiah, bringing unity to the Jewish people with 12 apostles and to the Gentile believers with the apostle to the Gentile. Now consider that idea in the context of Jesus' prayer to the Father in John chapter 17, verses 20 through 23. He said, I pray not only for these, but also for those who believe in me through their message, 
they uh, may they all be one as you father are in me and I in you and may they also be one in us so the world may believe you sent me I have given them the glory that you have given me may they be one as we are one echad I am in them and you are in me and may they be completely one so the world may know that you sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. John 17, verses 20 through 23. Think about these things. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.